In this video, I want to show you how to repaint your front door. In this tutorial, I'm using a hammer and punch, a latex paint conditioner, a sanding sponge, an oil or latex based primer that can be tinted, a high quality nylon brush, an electric drill. For the top coat, I'm using a satin finish high quality latex paint. All I needed was a quart of the primer and a quart of the top coat. To start off with, while the door can be painted installed vertically, you will get a much better finish and require much less paint if you put it horizontally. So to do this, the door will have to be removed. However, to reduce the amount of time that the door is removed, I'm going to do all preparation while it's installed. So the first step I'm going to do is a quick clean with some degreaser. This will remove all grease and dirt so when you sand it, it won't ground it into the surface. With the door dry from cleaning, it's time to scuff the paint surface. To do this, I'm going to get the sanding sponge and use circular motions on it. Be very careful on any edges because you might burn through the paint. At this point, most of the prep work is done, so I'm going to remove the door. Before I move it, I'm going to remove the locks and the doorknob as well. I plan on leaving the hinges on the door and just masking around them, so I'm going to remove it at the hinge joint. To do this, I just have a punch I'm going to stick in from the bottom, hammer it up until it gets the hinge started moving outward. Then I'm going to stick another punch underneath the head and finish hammering it out. With the hinge pins removed, I can remove the door and I'm going to take it downstairs to the garage. With the door on sawhorses, I'm going to remove any hardware I didn't remove earlier. Now I'm going to clean and scuff any areas I also missed earlier. Next, I'm going to mask off any areas I don't want paint. In my case, the kick plate is glued on, so I need to mask around it. And since I'm going to leave the hinge brackets on, I'm going to mask those as well. At this point, the door is ready to paint. If there is a drastic color change, then this will need to be primed first or else you will require mini coats for the top coat. So I'm going to apply the tinted primer now. To make things easier, I'm going to put the paint in this larger container. That way the paintbrush will fit easier. This primer is just Kills 3. I had it tinted at the store. It says to tint it slightly lighter than the color you want to paint it. This is still too light, but I'm hoping that it'll cover enough. This stuff is very watery, so make sure and mix it up so the dyes are spread evenly. The finish of the primer coat isn't too critical, but it will show through if there are a lot of ridges. So I'm going to use my widest paintbrush and put on a smooth coat. This might require two quick coats, but I'm going to put the fan on them so they dry quickly. Now I'm just going to let this completely dry. Also one thing to note when you're applying the coat, it needs to be heavy enough for it to weigh itself down. This is an example of applying it heavy enough. What happens if you don't apply it heavy enough is it'll dry as it's being applied and the bristles will show through from your brush. It gives a horrible finish and it's very splotchy. While the primer is drying, I'm going to mix the paint with the paint conditioner. So I'm going to start out by mixing the paint up. I'm going to shake the paint conditioner. According to the instructions on this flow troll, it could be mixed between 8 and 16 ounces per gallon. Since I only have about two thirds of a quart less, I'm going to be mixing much less, but I'm going to follow the same proportions. Now that this is thoroughly mixed together, it's time to paint the door. Okay, I'm back. This is about four days later. The original paint I used was this Bare Premium Plus. It's absolute junk. It doesn't cover at all. So I quickly realized that I would require way too many coats and it would be way too thick for it to actually turn this completely red. So what I did is sanded it down, got rid of all the high spots, and now I'm going to start over with the Bare Premium Ultra. The testing that I've done so far shows it to be far more effective in changing colors. I'm also going to change my technique. I'm going to lay it on much thicker on the flat portions than I am the panels. On the panels, I'll do more light coats than the flat parts just because I don't want it building up in the corners and it looking bad. So I'm going to start out by putting a heavy coat on just the flat portions and then a very light coat on the panels. The other difference is this Bare Premium Ultra is a lot less viscous than the other stuff.
the second coat turned out all right. What I'm going to do next time is before I get to about right here, I'm going to do the finish fast breathe section. I don't want to go more than about this distance. What I'm noticing is this is already congealing right here by the time I get over there. So I'm going to do the finish pass. The brush puts the strokes into the paint and it's too stiff to lay flat. So I'm going to do my finished strokes after doing each section instead of waiting for the entire door. Once the paint has dried and you're satisfied with the finish, it's time to remount the door. Mounting the door back is as simple as lining up the hinges and putting the pins in. Now's a good time as any to grease up the pins while you're at it. And this is the door when it's finished from the inside. And here's the door from the outside. Thanks for watching.